Welcome, children. Grab yourselves a blanket, maybe even a hot chocolate, and gather around the fire as we journey to Crater Lake. Welcome to Crater Lake, the year six school trip where your first day just might be your last. Maybe it's the blood-stained man who tries to stop the coach. Maybe it's the absence of welcoming staff. But something is definitely not right at Crater Lake Activity Centre. Then, at night, things get much, much stranger. Lance and his friends, Chet, Katja, Big Mac and Adrian, find themselves in a fight for survival and must work together to defeat a swarm of enemies. But whatever happens, they must never, ever fall asleep. <laughs> Chapter one, Geek Robot Overlord. Anyone want to play Geek Robot Overlord for the last cookie? I say, as the coach takes a slight, sharp right on the country lane. But if you win, you'll give it to Catcher. Big Mac looks round from the seat in front. If Cat wins, she'll give it to you. If I win, Chet will whinge at me until I give it to him. And anyway, Chetan's already eaten it. Catcher peeps out, peeps at us over the top of her seat. Haven't you, Chet? Why do you assume I've always eaten it? Says Chet. I look at him and laugh. <laughs> You've got crumbs of guilt around your mouth, mate. I pretend not to notice that Chetan makes out he's cleaning off bits of cookie while actually pushing them into his mouth. Of course, chubby Chet ate the last cookie, Trent shouts from the back seat. He always ruins everything. Geek, robot, overlord, best of three. He says to his mates. Loser has to share a room with fangs and probably won't make it through the night. Who wants to play? Everyone on the back seat laughs, like Trent is the funniest guy in the world. I've known him since reception, and I can tell you, legit, he isn't. And not just because most of his dumb jokes are about me. He just all round sucks. If anyone gets to share a room with Lance, it should be me, Chet pipes up, totally missing the point. I'm his best friend. Chubby and Fang share a room. Chubby gobbles up Fang's tomb. Trent falls over the back of his seat, laughing at his own joke slash poem. I like to give respect where it's earned, but let's face it, that's not clever or funny. Wow, Trent made a rhyme, I say, rolling my eyes at his smug face. Say what you want about me, but leave Chetan out of it. That's okay, Lance, I can take a joke. Chet is kneeling on his seat, facing the back of the coach. Everything about him is neat and sensible, and he has eyes like balls of chocolate, all gooey and sincere. Yeah, chill out, Lance, Trent says. And they go back to playing Geek Robot Overlord, which is the Montmori Year 6 version of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Trent claimed he made it up during a wet break back in October, but it was actually me, Chet, Big Mac and Catcher's creation. It's been used for every important decision ever since. Overlord enslaves Geek. I win, Trent shouts. Trent almost always plays Overlord, so he's easy to beat. But his mates either haven't realised or don't want to make him mad, so they keep pulling out the Geek. All of them are so predictable. Good one, Trent, Chet calls and turns to sit down again. Why do you do that, Chet? Do what? Suck up to Trent. He's not your friend, and he never will be. I don't understand why you would want to even be friends with him. Mum says he's a wonderful boy. And as we're both going to Bing Academy, it makes sense for us to stick together. There will be hundreds of people at Bing. You don't need him. Hopefully you'll be there on the waiting. Hopefully you'll go at the waiting list fast, and then you can come to Bing with me. Chetan smiles at me. Mate, it's a long list. It might take ages to get in. That's what I say to Chet. But inside, I know I'm never going to get in. I didn't take the entrance test and I'm not on the waiting list. 
I can't tell Chad that though. And when you arrive, you'll have Trent and me to show you around. The clouds are extra fluffy in Chet's world. Year six. Huh. Year six. I want everyone to quieten down at the face of front, please. Miss Hogg, the assistant head, stands up at the front of the coach, trying not to fall, fall as it bumps up and down the country road. I always think of saying her name. I always think saying her name sounds like you're trying to cough up something nasty, which works because it's how she makes me feel. I'm now going to provide you with some rules and information, she says, pronouncing the long words especially slow and clearly for those of us who are too dumb to understand people speaking at normal speed, aka me, or so she thinks. This information is of the greatest importance for ensuring you have a safe and productive trip. Some of you, she looks at me, should be paying particular attention to the information about the rules. Damn, if she says information one more time. There will be stickers presented to the children who demonstrate exemplary behavior. She beams at Trent, Adrian and Chet and punishments for those who let the rest of the class down by being disruptive. I'll give you one guess who she looks at then. She opens a leaflet and starts to read. Crater Lake is the new and innovative activity center designed with the needs and safety of your children in mind to, prov to provide an unforgettable learning experience. She looks up. We're actually the first school to be trying out this center, so we're extremely fortunate. My mum is a parent governor, Trent says, loud enough so that I will hear. And she told me we're stuck going to Crater Lake because some people's parents refuse to pay the good activities, pay for the good activity centres. More laughing from the Muppets at the back. The centre was built deep in the rural Sussex, rural Sussex, in a crater thought to have been formed when a meteor hit the Earth's surface hundreds of years ago continues. A meteor from space, miss? Someone asks. Yes, of course. Where else would a meteor come from? A meaty roaming bone? Big Mac whispers at the back from the seat in front of me. And we all begin to laugh. Miss Hot glares at us. The deepest part of the crater is home to the crater, crater lake itself, as the river Wist, which used to run past the site, took a detour many years ago and now feeds into the crater. The lake is the ideal arena for many of our daring water activities, such as swimming, canoeing, and our epic game, The Last Man Standing. So sexist, Adrian sighs. Adrian is head girl, super smart, and looks kind of like an angry sparrow. You wouldn't mess with her. If anyone in our class is going to win a game called Last Man Standing, I'd bet everything on my own that it would be Adrian. Other outdoor activities include the climbing wall, obstacle course, and the leap of faith. I don't like the sound of that, Chet says. Chet, I say, putting my hand on his arm for reassurance. They're not going to let us do anything even slightly dangerous. It's true, catch and odds, there are laws. I heard you have to jump over a ravine filled with starving crocodiles, Big Mac says. Chet looks horrified. The dormitories, chill out zone. The whole class roll their eyes. Dining hall and bathrooms are located in the main building, which is built on a rise in the crater. At this point, I start to slip into a coma. Miss Hock always says at least a hundred more things than unnecessary. Do I have your attention, Lance Sparrowshot? She's suddenly standing right in front of my seat. Uh, yes, miss. She leans in way too close to my face. I'm in the window seat, so Chet has to squash himself into the back of his seat to avoid any uncomfortable physical contact. Her breath smells like coffee and muddy dog. You're lucky to be on this trip. If there was any way I could prove what we both know you did at the beginning of this year, you would have been excluded. If you take even the smallest step out of line, you'll be done, 
and there will be a black mark on your school record before you have even started at Langham High. She withdraws from mine and Chet's seating area like a swamp monster oozing back into its pit and starts walking towards the front of the coach again. Chet is frozen, burrowed so far into the padding of his seat that if his skin was some weird purple and blue triangular print, he'd be totally camouflaged. Bit too close for you, I say. No words, he mutters without blinking. Catcher giggles and Big Mac coughs to cover the snort of laughter. Something funny, Miss Hawk spins round. We all look at the floor. Hmm, stickers for everyone for excellent listening, Miss Hawk says, except Lance, Maxim and Catcher. Yeah, no listening stickers for us. That punishment really burns. The rules of Crater Lake are as follows. She nearly falls as she wobbles back to her seat where she left the leaflet. Catcher and Big Mac are desperately trying not to laugh. Chet is motionless, probably still in shock. Six children, either boys or girls, not both, to a room. Please don't say what you're going to say, Hawk. Please don't say what you're going to say. Except for Lance, who has to have his own room due to personal issues. Whispers and sniggers all around. I hate her. Nobody is to enter the dormitory other than their own. You must remain in your rooms throughout the night. Mr. Tompkins, Miss Rani and myself will be watching at all times. She pauses to stare around at all of us, just to remind us how good she is at watching. Never wander the site alone, she continues. You must always be accompanied by a member of staff, sucking the fun right out of everything as usual. You must follow any and all instructions given to you by any member of staff. This is for your own safety. Chet nods enthusiastically. And of course, have fun. Your experience at Crater Lake is going to be one you'll remember for the rest of your lives. She smiles. I think she's waiting for us to clap or something. There's an awkward moment of silence and then stuff gets crazy. The coach lurches at the same time as the driver shouts and the brakes screech. We all fall forwards, smacking our heads on the seats in front. Miss Hawk stacks in full force and rolls around on the floor. Bags, books, sandwiches fly through the air, landing in sticky piles. Atoll's unicorn pillow gets covered in mayonnaise. One of Jordan's limited edition WWE wrestling cards flies out of an open window and flutters away to the freedom. May the force be with you, John Senna, I call, as it disappears into the trees. A slice of ham flies and catches Chet's hair, which is especially bad because he's a vegetarian. It's chaos. The coach skids to a stop. Whew, what happened? Hot gasps at the driver. Uh, there's something in the road, someone in the road. Of course, everyone rushes forwards, trying to see out of the front window. Everybody back to your seats, Hawk screams above the noise, and she and the other teachers form a human barricade at the front of the coach. Oh, I'll call for an ambulance, the driver says, grabbing his mobile phone and stabbing the buttons. It's one of those old fashioned phones without a touch screen that you rarely see anymore. Uh, has anyone got any signal? I've got no signal. The teachers all crack their, check their phones and shake their heads. Why do we need an ambulance? Chet says. Nobody's hurt. I don't think it's for us, I say, angling my head as far out of the crack of an open window as I can. I think it's for whoever's outside. All I can see is the empty road and nothing but trees for miles around. I press my face to the glass again, so hot it almost burns my skin. At the same time, a bloody hand thumps against the window from the outside. And now we're on to chapter two. See you tomorrow.